Hello again in this second video in this series concerning playing the clarinet. So I was talking to you previously about the very basic aspect of warming up, and that was to do with long notes and just being aware of the embouchure, being loose, allowing the air to flow through the instrument. Along with that, of course, relaxed fingers, which takes me on to the next thing I'd like to talk to you about today, which is finger position on the instrument. This, if not learnt correctly or experienced correctly at the outset of your learning, can prove to be a great hindrance as you progress. And indeed, much time can be spent later on, even if you show wonderful potential as an instrumentalist, trying to undo what needn't need to be undone had you learnt it correctly in the first place. So hand position, fundamentally, you have to find the most comfortable position to facilitate the greatest fluidity and ease of movement in your hands as a clarinetist. So I would suggest that the position your hand is in as you naturally hang it by your side, the fingers will naturally have a curvature. This is what you need to achieve on the clarinet. So having done that, you will bring your hand up and you will see it's in the correct position. You can do this for yourself by holding the clarinet or having a friend, an assistant hold the clarinet for you placing the fingers over the tone holes in that natural curved position. Bring up from the elbow, your fingers will be curved and in the correct position. Another way to think of it is to take an orange, an imaginary orange, and bring your hand in. What one often sees and has to undo as a teacher is this. Straight fingers or the downward diagonal position with the hand squished here and therefore the little fingers stretched out and locked. This, because these two fingers share the same tendon, will not allow you to have freedom of movement and to develop any real technique to allow you to play fast passage work as you progress. So I urge you to consider your hand position at all times and make that as important a part of your warm up as you do your long note and breath practice. You can then combine the two, and a wonderful book to do this with is one entitled Devadi Makum by Jean Jean, which I'm sure you've heard mention of before. It's terrific. It's not just a boring tome. You look at it, it's just a whole load of oodles on black notes. But if you approach it intelligently and with focus and knowing what your aim is, it's a highly profitable and interesting and quite exciting thing to do. The aim is to keep the fingers as close to the key work as possible. So with minimal movement, you can move very, very fast. And I'm going to play you an exercise by somebody called Krupsch, which will show you that before moving back to Jean Jean. So here's an example of something very fast, but the actual finger movement is very, very slow. It's just they move rapidly one after the other, but individually, it's not fast. <laughs> It looks difficult, it's truly not. But if I were to allow my fingers to flap, I can't do it, squeaks galore. Which brings me back to this wonderful book I cannot recommend to you highly enough, Vardy Makem by Jean Jean. And the first exercise goes like this. <laughs> and so on. Then it suggests taking it to double speed. Only take it to double speed when you are playing totally evenly and you have to be your own judge on this. You may find when you first start, and often I've heard your pupils do this, they'll go. And they say to me, no, but I'm moving my fingers evenly. You may be moving them evenly, but the oral result is unevenness. So you have to learn to listen to what you are doing and not rely on somebody outside to tell you that's not even. Listen, you can be your own best teacher. And the idea is that you will be your own teacher long term by learning how to listen, how to criticize, how to hear what the problem is, and then try something out which is going to correct it. And if you apply that to your learning throughout, you will progress very, very fast. And it does not only apply to the clarinet, it can apply to all of life. Good luck with your practice.